Now I'm getting my paints ready to um, to screen print onto my purple background and the screen that I'm going to be using is my stripe screen and um, this is such a boring screen on its own um, what's the purpose of buying a screen that's just going to lay lines across your page uh, I have done some really funky things with this on fabric and paper and I just love um, mixing paints to create some background paper or pattern um, mixing a variety of these paints and putting it through the screen and I'm going to start by putting this screen printing on this big water watercolor paper that I have here but I'm also going to start pulling pieces of deli paper to also screen print to um, but I want to show you just how much fun this stripe screen can be so I'm just getting ready um, with my paints on my palette and what I've chosen to do is grab a bunch of uh, craft paints that are within like the cool, uh, that are all kind of cool colors and actually close together on the color wheel. Um, of course the purple isn't as close as these other tones but I just want to show you kind of what happens here and how much fun this can be. some purple here and then on top of that I'm going to use some of this um, deep violet I love this color I'm just going to put it over here for now and the most important part of this is your white so um, my white I'm just going to put down here so I can kind of pull it in as I want to but as you can see, I've got a variety of um, cool colors on my palette, and I've got a whole bunch of white that I'm going to use here to start screen printing with. So I'm going to just set this over to the side and grab my squeegee, which right now it doesn't doesn't really matter what size squeegee you use. Usually mine are cleaner than this, um, but. What I'm going to show you, I'll kind of run it this way and then I can place it more than one place. So this screen is going to get really covered in paint and um, it's going to be a messy process. So I have my batting underneath and you can see I've already printed to this batting. Um, and then it gets a little flat so I've got a second layer of clean batting underneath it. Um, it really does help when you're screen printing because it gives this tiny bit of cushion to the paper. And um, I'm going to start first by grabbing some of my white. And I know you can't see this. I'm going to grab some of that really light blue too. So, I can't see it, but there's some blue underneath here. But anyway, I'm going to go over this once. And it doesn't matter right now that you're covering the whole, the whole image. doesn't matter at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start incorporating, I'm going to drag some of these colors here and just kind of start playing with them. I'm actually going to leave this one for the green blues and I'm just going to grab another squeegee for the purples. Um, but what I want to start to show you here is that as you kind of mix these colors in and pick the screen up and kind of layer it again. The paint starts blending and it starts to create some really cool effects on the background. So here I'm going to use my purples. Purple and blue here if I can get it on my squeegee. And I'm just going to start incorporating that and there is no method here. The screen is really forgiving. Um, and like I said, if you just keep going over this, you're going to start creating some very cool effects um, that you can use as a background or you can use, um, you know, to screen print to deli, deli paper. So I'm probably finished with this one. I don't think that I want to incorporate anything, but if you look at these shades that are all um, blending in right here. It is just, it creates such an interesting background, such an interesting pattern 
with all those blending. So experiment with this. Um, definitely buy this screen. It looks like the most boring screen on my on my uh, offerings on my Etsy shop, but believe me, it is not. Um, it's not a boring screen, and you know, being able to show you kind of how I how I play with this, it's important for you to see what these screens are capable of doing. So when I design my screens, I am not always I am not always designing um, one specific image. Like a lot of my screen prints, I'm experimenting with um, with pattern and things like that. And you know, by repeating this print, you can get just some really, really cool um, results doing this. So I wanted to show you, and especially for my friend Ellie out there, um, definitely wanted you to see how this stripe um, screen can actually work here. So I'm going to let some of these dry. Actually, I'm going to do some in warm colors. And you can see, too, as um, if you keep the colors together, you know, warm or cool, um, your colors won't muddy. And, um, and you just get some really cool effects with the blending of those colors. So I will see you back here soon. Okay, I'm back, and um, now I've got uh, warm colors here set out on my palette, and a whole bunch of white. Um, again, I included that purple that I really love so much, the Deep Violet from Liquitex, and um, the red that I used by them is the Cadmium Red Deep Hue. So those two colors work really well together when you start mixing them up, um, and I just love the results. So, and actually because I've got a lot of, um, a lot of the cool colors paint left on my uh, palette here, left on my printing palette, um, I'm actually just going to flip that over so that we don't get any of the blue mixed in with that. Um, again, I'm going to start with some watercolor paper and I just wanted to show you that um, I was just cleaning up my... Uh, cleaning up my palette and um, something very important to know is that this palette paper, this is this is Strathmore palette paper and this pad happens to be the large um, 12 by 16 inch. Once you cover that palette with the paint, do not throw that piece of palette paper away because um, I bet you anything you can also rip that up and collage with it. Um, I was just testing it out and, and I actually printed a whole bunch using all my extra paint so that I didn't waste any of my paint. Um, you know, I'm just covering my palette and then I'm just covering extra pieces of deli paper so that I, I can use up all that paint because I know at some point it will, it will um, you know, be used in collage or something. So um, here I just wanted to show you too, I was using up the end of the paint and I just went um, both directions with that screen and kind of got a cute little um, checkerboard there. But I'm going to start, uh, I wanted to save some of this pink background to print with the warm colors as well. So now that I've got my clean squeegees, oh, here they are, got my clean squeegees and um, I'm going to start playing with these warm hues and I think I'm going to hold off on that one just for a minute. And I've gone to the sink and I've rinsed out all of my paint and then I've dried off my screen by patting it, laying it flat between the two layers of towel and I pat that dry and I push it down and pat that dry. Um, and this method has worked for me using warm water and just a gentle sponge brush to get the paint um, out of the screen. And you've got to watch your timing on how much screen printing you actually do with these before you go rinse it out. Um, but I also know that if you treat your screens right and you clean them up and um, keep them dry and, and do not scrub them hard and do not use boiling hot water, you know, you want a, a warm water that's going to help that acrylic paint to rinse out really fast, these will keep for a really long time. The, um, 
the duct tape edges, you know, they will lift and it's no big deal. The only thing you want to make sure of when you go to print the next time is that there isn't any additional paint that's trapped here um, that might squeeze out onto your new print, just like that. So, um, you know, just take those precautions, but normally after that paint that may have gotten caught in there uh, dries, it won't be a problem. So I'm just going right to my next piece of paper using this after <clears throat> after washing it out. So um, I'm just going to start mixing some of my colors over here. And again, I'm going to, here I'm just working directly on, on white. Maybe I will start on here. So the colors, when I first print them, they're going to be more intense um, because I haven't got so much white. But actually, on my palette over here, which I know you can't see, I'm going to take some of these colors with white and I'm just going to start kind of mixing them together. And now that I've got a variety of color on here, I'm just going to um, lay my screen print right here and just kind of pick up that paint and print over that. Oh, yummy. Just love that. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll leave that alone and uh, that one will dry. Now I'm going to, uh, let me show you first. I'm going to take one of these pieces that I painted already of the deli paper and I'm going to add some more white to my squeegee and now that there's paint already in the screen that white's going to blend with the paint and of course this this process is a messy process I do not you know I don't worry about the pressure um, that I'm applying here I just want this to become something really interesting and just a messy print because I think that what what will end up here will be something really cool. Um, because I just kind of messed that up, I'm just going to go back over it with some red and see if I can make that look interesting. That might be slightly overdone, but I don't care because it's going to be cool no matter what. <laughs> so here um, I have my ungessoed page and I wish I could make these screens bigger, I really do. Um, because I hate having to go in and like reprint off the edges and stuff like that. So, But I'll deal with it. And uh, of course I want to cover as much of that paper as I can. Now I'm going to grab some of this purple. And I'm just going to see what happens when I start incorporating that over it. And I'm not doing it in a heavy, um, a heavy application. I'm going to work some red into this too. So this one could get, could get really messy. I think I'm going to stop right there. And let's try another one of our. Actually, I'm going to save that for something else. So. I'm going to start with another one of these, and meanwhile I'm waving my, my wet screen all across here, and it's drying, so you got to be really careful that way. I'm going to bring some white in. So this is just, this is a really fun technique for creating a colorful background. And I think right here, I may go in there with some spray afterwards, after this is dry. Um, or just a regular watercolor paint and just kind of add in some more color behind there so the, so it's not such a contrast and it blends nicer. Um, of course here I got my deli paper and I'm still printing with the screen as it's drying out and I want to make sure that I use up all the paint that I just put on my palette but yet I want to be careful about my screen so it is kind of a fast process when you're screening, um, just because you're using the acrylic paint and it will dry so fast. And yeah, so you know what? I'm going to take this to the. Uh, actually, I want to see what happens when I do it on this side. Sometimes you can print from both sides. It depends. It's not going to hurt the screen. 
at all. Um, it will make a mess because every side is going to have paint on it, but you know, we love to make messes and that's what makes it really fun. So definitely flip flip this type of screen over and play from the other side while you're doing this. And actually when this paper dries, um, it, it may be the opposite side that you feel like using and incorporating into something rather than just the front side that you put the actual paint on. Um, if you look at here on my palette now, I'm going to actually use some deli paper here and pick up a lot of that paint so I don't waste it and I have it on a nice piece of deli paper and I can always um, do some screen printing on top of this as well I gotta go rinse my screen out anyways I'm gonna stop for a minute I'll be right back 